So, I know there was one year, I think it was at Kindred, we uh, were running in the middle of operation, and all of a sudden, one of the emergency lights goes off, and it's light, lighting up a whole room. And uh, I ran in, there's groups coming, there's a group, uh, group that just left, and I did the only thing I knew what to do is I grabbed the emergency light off the wall, so it's lighting up my path. I'm hiding it under my lab coat, and uh, I run out, and there's some guys standing by the exit, and I start waving the emergency light around, just, you know, doing whatever, and one guy actually screamed. I terrified him. I think I chased him down the street with the light, and I threw it in the back of my truck on the way back, and then just kind of ran back in and continued doing my thing. That was, like, the funniest thing that I've ever uh, done. Well, yeah, and that's like the kind of stuff you can't, you can't plan for that sort of thing. It's just like you have to think on your feet. And so, I mean, there you were just trying to solve a practical problem and you just had to improv and turn it into a scare. Well, I mean, you see somebody running out with anything in your hand covered in blood. You, you, people don't really think. They're just like, oh, crap. Plus, I, was, I think I was screaming like an idiot, too, just yelling at people. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Uh, like uh, at Kindred, Ryan, you were uh, the few nights you were able to play jasper behind the behind the door um that was a lot of fun because i'm in the queue line and then you know i'm making my comments and you could have i mean any number of actors behind that door but if they don't if they aren't able to play off of you like spontaneously then the effect is kind of dampened but i remember one night in particular there was a guy he was you know he kind of dressed punk and I made the comment that he looked like, um, I forget the character's name, but he looked like the one guy from Return of the Living Dead. Suicide. Yeah, and then Ryan, Ryan, you remember what you shouted out from behind the door? No. You were like, <laughs> you quoted one of the lines from the from the movie. Um, you said something like, it's... it's Not a costume, it's yes, a way of life. <laughs> that's right, yeah. And had that been anyone else, like, you know, one of the younger kids, they wouldn't have known, the, they wouldn't have known what I was saying to the guy. So... The stuff like that, just being able to play off of people always adds to, to the atmosphere. Uh, well, this isn't a story so much as a, as a haunter, but as, a, as somebody that went to haunted houses as a child. It's one of my favorite activities. Uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm born in October, and, you know, ever since I was a little kid, Halloween and the Halloween season was like, just felt like my time of year, you know. So I was always pretty keyed up to go to the haunted houses. And uh, I remember I went. Uh, Groziel had a haunted house at the old military base at the south end of the island and um, they had this one particular room and it had a really heavy strobe effect and there was a clown in there <clears throat> and this is back in the 80s so clowns weren't really thought of the, as the object of fear that they are today but this clown was scaring me and not only that the, the clown had some kind of snake like a real snake around their neck so as they're moving the, the snake in the uh, strobe it appears like the snake's closer to you than it may really be. So I told the lady, and I'm 10 years old, I'm like, don't bring that snake any closer. Well, I didn't even know it was a lady. It was just somebody in a clown suit. I'll get to that later. But uh, the clown kept bringing the snake closer. So fight or flight reflex, I punched the clown in the, in the eye. <laughs> <clears throat> and they doubled over in pain, and I was rushed into the next room. Didn't, just, just went through the haunted house, never thought about it again. And then like five or six years later, I was at my friend's house and uh, his mother, her friend came over and she's like, oh, you're Ryan. And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, you punched me in the face <laughs> six years ago at the Gross Hill Haunted House. And I'm like, uh, I didn't, I, you were a clown with a snake and <laughs> I just thought that was the appropriate thing to do. I've, uh, I got a ghost story. So when I was in high school, um, my friends and I had heard about this house, an abandoned house that you could get into. So, of course, we were like, well, let's go get in that house. Um, it sat on, on the creek, actually, that feeds into, it's Swan Creek, it feeds into Lake Erie. And it was kind of situated at the back of this subdivision, I guess you would call it. So there was a fence on one side of the property, and then there was like a, almost like a stream not like one you could just step over either. So we were able to to actually hop the fence. And the um, house looks dilapidated. And the grass is all overgrown. So the first time, me and one of my buddies went there, and we just sort of walked around the house. We didn't go in. We didn't see a point of entrance. So 
we went back a week or so later, three of us, and we found a, we found a way in. And um, we're going about this house, and it looked like a hoarder lived there. There was just stuff piled up in every room, almost every space. There was one room, you couldn't even go in it. There was stuff piled about three feet high. It was almost like someone was just like, well, this goes in, the, this goes in that room. So we're going through this place. And I would later find family photos on the floor amongst some, or someone clearly started a fire. That was kind of creepy. So we, we go upstairs and um, in this upstairs bedroom, and this was like a scene out of a movie, there's a wall with newspaper clippings on it, numerous newspaper clippings. And each one of them has to do with death, has to do with animals or people that went missing, those same animals or people turning up in shallow graves. And I was just like, guys, that was my buddy Luke and Stu. I was like, look at this. I'm like, this is not normal. So I'm thinking, hey, we have to take these to let people, because people had to know we were there. So I start pulling these things off the wall. And as I'm doing that, I hear from, it sounds like from some other room in the house, not the very next room, but a little distant. I hear what sounds like somebody kind of moaning in anger or pain. And I remember thinking, okay, I'm not going to acknowledge that because if I do, we're going to bolt and I still need, I still have articles to steal off the wall. Well, then it was my friend Stu actually said, he goes, did you guys hear that? And then my other friend turned to him and said, yeah, let's get the hell out of here. Well, then I'm like, okay, we all heard it. And I'd never been so terrified. So I was the third one in line. And so we all bolt down the stairs. And all I could think of was something is going to snatch me from behind just as I'm like going to leap out of the back window because there was like um, kind of a springy sofa that was like near the back window. So that's what we literally did. We hit it and sprung out this like one of those tall windows. But that wasn't enough. We went back. This time it was just two of us. I wanted to know how long it had been since somebody had been in the house. This was 1999. So I had my disposable camera with me. <laughs> and we were searching through the house for, for signs of when somebody may have lived there. That's when I found the pictures. And I don't think I could find a date on the pictures. But as we were going up the stairs, because there was an attic, I wanted to explore the attic. Why? Why? I had to know. I, I, was, Why? I was much braver at 16. <laughs> So we get to the landing of the stairs, and I notice a couple of a couple of mustard bottles and jars, which I thought that was odd. Like clearly, this person was a slob, or someone's ransacked the house. But for there to be several empty mustard jars, I was like, that's weird. I pick one up, and I, I look at the date on it, and I believe the date was like ninety one, the expiration. I was like, okay, so it's been a good eight nine years since someone's probably been here. Realistically, I was holding it kind of like this, and I felt. The only way I can explain it, it felt like someone grabbed my arm and pushed my arm down to about about my waist. My whole body just lit up with goosebumps, and I thought, oh, my God. All these years later, I think about it. I'm like, no, I don't think that was just me overreacting or it was some response to the adrenaline and, like, essentially my I thought I felt it. No, I'm, I'm certain. Something touched me, forced my arm down. And I remember standing there thinking, like, okay, I can't say anything because we'll leave and I want to explore some more. I thought, uh, obviously this mustard jar meant something to whoever this, this character is. So I just calmly set it back down. And I remember thinking, okay, I've, I've put your property down. Let's leave me alone now. And then we went up the stairs and we, we explored a little more. I took a bunch of pictures and we left and nothing further happened. But that, that, that may have been... May have been the most frightened I ever was in my life. And uh, I never went back to the house after that. Um, word got out around school and a bunch of people started going. So, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't cool anymore. I did go back years <laughs> later, though, uh, when I was um, delivering pizzas um, and the property had been torn down. So that was disappointing. But, yeah, that was, that was frightening. What kind of mustard was it? You know, Ryan, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't make note of the particular type of brand. 
Grey Poupon. I was just going to say I didn't that. document that. I that was, was important. I, I was in terror. <laughs> that was important to the ghost. It should have been important. Yeah, maybe it was their favorite brand of mustard. Yeah. Maybe they're just trying to tell me, like, hey, you should use that. It's good. It's good stuff. <laughs> they were trying to force it into your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. But both times you experience something in that house, like hearing the moaning and then having your arm pushed down, you were doing something with some of the, yeah. the objects yeah. in the house. Yep. Did you ever get any history on the house or the occupants? No, nothing. I, I, from the pictures, it looked like a, a, a normal family. The property looked really nice at some point. Um, so no, there was one other strange thing, and I didn't notice this until years later. The first time me and my buddy Luke went, when we didn't even go in the house, um, we were just sort of searching around the front and the sides of the house. We took pictures of each other in front of the house. So I've never been one to put much stock in those, like the orbs that turn up in some pictures. Usually it's, it's insects, it's dust, it's whatever. The only odd thing about this was, so there's a picture of Luke standing in front of the house. Um, and then there's a picture of me standing in front of the house. And Luke's picture, there's 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 no visible orbs. In the picture of me, and now mind you, you can see from the picture, and I remember from being there, taken with the same camera, taken from the same distance, under the same lighting conditions, moments later, there's an explosion of orbs in the picture. I didn't even notice that probably until a good eight, nine years later. And I was just going through the pictures one day, and I was like, <gasps> That, that kind of freaked me out because again like I don't really think those those pictures with orbs mean a whole lot but seeing it under you know, having been there and knowing that those pictures were taken under the same conditions at the, from the same camera the same distance I was like that's weird that kind of freaked me out I think those spirits were trying to tell me something so uh, back in 1988 or so I think I had just seen the movie <clears throat> uh, Halloween 4 Return of Michael Myers and I'm like I gotta get a Michael Myers mask. Well, back then, you didn't have, like, Halloween USA or any of those type deals. So the only place I could find it, I subscribed to Fangoria magazine, and they had all kinds of ads in the back, and there was a, a studio that made Michael Myers masks. And, you know, it was like 80 bucks, and that was a lot for a kid back then. But to me, it was well worth it. So I finally got the Michael Myers mask in the mail. And my dad worked at Great Lakes, so he had a, a variety of coveralls and... Uh, I got one dyed blue. Again, the, everything wasn't as available as it is now. So I had like a movie quality Michael Myers outfit and nobody knew it. <clears throat> and I had a friend who was deathly afraid of Michael Myers. So I made it a point, uh, one of the first nights I was in possession of this costume is I would uh, climb the fence into the back of his property and I just kind of stand back there and I just kind of stand back there and I'd stare at his bedroom window. <laughs> and I mean, I might have been out there for like 40 minutes, but the minute he saw me, all the lights in the house went on. All like the back porch light went on. Uh, he started yelling out the back door, like, you better get out of here or I'm calling the cops. And then, you know, eventually I had to let him in on the fact that it was me, <laughs> but uh, it was money well spent. <laughs> And uh, whenever we get together for drinks, he still brings that up. Like, you were, for you to stand back there as long as you did. And I'm like, yeah, but man, it was well worth it. <clears throat> Same outfit. Uh, that year, the Wyandotte JCs were putting on the haunted house in that, you know, that parking lot next to my house. There used to be a house there, and that at one time was uh, Wyandotte JC's haunted house. Well, again, <clears throat> A couple of buddies and I were going around, you know, usually we'd hit maybe three or four haunted houses in a night, and I was wearing my coveralls, and I had my Michael Myers mask shoved down into the leg of my pants. So then when we went into the haunted house, I put the mask on, and suddenly I looked like a haunt actor. Yep. So I'm just walking around, just doing what, you know, walking through people's scenes, and people are like, who's that? You know, and then... Uh, He's new. My, my, yeah, I'm just like ruining people's scares, walking the wrong way, just blocking stuff, and they're, they're, get out of here. So then we're leaving the haunted house, and I'm like, hey, you guys should like beat me up. Like, you know, so I like walk out into the parking lot, and my friends just like jump on me and start like not really beating me up, but physically, like, I mean, it's, it looks like they're really beating the heck out of me, and uh, people are like, 
man, you know, this place is crazy, you know? <laughs> yeah. I think I buried that mask when I was, I got a lot of use out of you that thing. You buried it? Yeah, I buried it. You know, it's proper burial. Where'd you bury that? Uh, why? <laughs> We're going to need an exact just, location. Just, <laughs> just talking about the first time I went to Haunted House, this is another thing my brother and I debate, um, whether or not it could have been real or not. Um... You'll remember Anxiety Alley in Lincoln Park. No longer there, but was for 40 years. Trailer haunt. And my mom and uh, her sister, who's, who's my godmother, they decided when my brother and I were probably mm, four and five, five and six, that this would be a grand idea to take us through this. So there are two things in particular that stuck out. My brother and I will talk about them to this day. The first one was a, as I remember it, <laughs> A shower scene and it, I guess it could have happened somebody dressed in a very convincing at least to my five or six year old memory um, creature from the black lagoon like rubber costume and they were literally just like scrubbing themselves and I, I think they waved to me <laughs> so that was the first instance as I was mind you all this is happening as I'm, I'm screaming out of my mind I remember thinking what, what is my mom and my aunt doing well, how, why are they doing this to us the second one that we talk about is there was a, we seem to remember a well. <laughs> and I know you could do these illusions with mirrors and whatnot, because it was like one of those like, almost like bottomless pit things, except, I mean, we all know how those illusions are broken, right? If you put something in there for perspective, there's a person, there's an actor at the bottom of the pit, and they looked small, and they were like calling up to us. And it's something Jason and I have talked about a number of times with theirs, and he's convinced, he's like, we made it up. He's like, that didn't happen. It couldn't have happened. We were scared out of our minds afterward. We probably talked about how scared we were, and that was like a, a, an agreed-upon delusion we'd created. I'm not so convinced that that was the case, um, or if Anxiety or anxiety I ever did something so cool. <laughs> that, was one of, that was my first visit to a haunted house. It's not really a Halloween thing or anything. But, like, you know how you were talking about the newscast? Yeah. I was living at um, Chris's house. I was sleeping on in, on his couch. And we had, you know, we were drinking the night before. And fell asleep with my iPod hooked to the um, radio. So I was playing music all night. Well, I didn't know, because I just, he had put a bunch of his music on my iPod, that <laughs> there was, um, it was like a news broadcast that the dead were coming back to life, kind of like what mm-hmm. you were talking about. So I'm past that on the couch sleeping. And all of a sudden, it was like one of those alert sounds. Mm. And then, you know, the dead are returning back to life. I wake up out of a sleep. I mean, I was out. And I'm like, and I'm listening to it. And my brain's not going. You it's fell happening. Asleep. It's happening. I was like, I jumped up and I grabbed a hatchet <laughs> that was in my toolbox. And I'm like looking out the window. <laughs> and uh, the, the broadcast probably went for like five minutes on my iPod. So there's a good five minutes where I'm like, freaking out and then it changed songs to you know some other music and i'm like (laughs) and then i'm looking out the window and people are cutting their grass and and then i'm like was that and i walk over to my ipod and hit back and it starts playing again i'm like so it was your ipod is that it's it's because of something like that we have station identification like after the orson moe's reading of the war of the worlds was that was it Halloween or Devil's Night 38? Oh, it was one or something? the other, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. people were killing themselves. Yeah. Thinking aliens were invading. So then they were like, we need some new rules about this. <laughs> and they I also was... took some shots at a water tower. Because the, the, the water, because the, in that area of New Jersey where it was supposedly taking place, it was a big water tower. And some farmers who never noticed the water tower before <laughs> thought it sounded like the tripods described in the stories and oh. filled it with buckshot. <laughs> That was, yeah. I, I immediately had that deleted off my iPod, by the way. I was like, you plug it back in, take it off. <laughs> He's like, well, why? Because they were sleeping still in the you know back of the trailer. I'm like, I don't like it. <laughs> Good times. Cool.